Hello friends, it's Lionheart here. The final reveals are now live. <sighs> Nilfgaard, they waited till the end. <laughs> it's... Well, I have never liked Clock. I'm going to start with that, okay? It's one of my least favorite archetypes in all of Gwent history. I really don't like the original version of Clock that existed from Way of the Witcher. I can't pretend I ever did, and I'm not going to lie to you. These cards that you're about to see do support Clock, but in a much, much better way. I, I've been teasing you guys for a little while saying that you're going to be surprised that I like these cards because they support an archetype I've never enjoyed, but I feel like the way they work for the player and for the person that they're facing is much, much healthier for the game. You're going to see what I mean and you're going to see why. This is our final video in terms of reveals. I will be putting out a deck list for each faction tomorrow in a video. It'll be a condensed one, it'll be rapid fire, and we might cover some of the headline balance patch changes at the same time. But I really want to keep that video to 20 minutes. I hope you've enjoyed these videos as much as I have. We have one final card drop for Gwent, and of course I will be doing exactly the same thing in between now and then. There will be deck guides, there will be lore videos, there will be all sorts, including community tournaments and maybe some highlights from it as well. But you're not here to listen to me ramble. You are here for Nilfgaard Reveals. So you know what? Let's go. And we start off with the common card. It is the Toxicologist. If Nilfgaard had a title, it would be this. It could represent the entire faction pretty well. Four base power, four provisions, nice and simple. He is a human, not an agent, and has simply a deploy ability. Infuse an enemy unit with, whenever a card enters or leaves your deck, damage self by one. Then, if it wasn't a token, spawn it at, spawn its copy at the bottom of your opponent's deck. So, Firstly, love that we've learned the lessons of not being able to target and clog with tokens. It was my least favorite thing that clog used to be able to do. I'm glad we've managed to clarify that on card this time as well. That's really good. The ability itself clogs, but clogs to the bottom of your opponent's deck. So it doesn't really mess with your draws. I'll cover that because there's an overarching theme there and it still has a big impact on the opponent and on how you're going to benefit from it as well. But, obviously, the infused enemy unit, each time something enters or leaves the deck, so if we clog them, it's going to get damaged. So that's not too bad at all. But also, if they play a card, or we find a way to pull a card out of their deck, it will also damage that unit. So avoid your tokens and clog carefully, because, of course, much like the old Witcher, you're going to spawn a copy of this card. This is not limited to bronze cards, as you can see. So be very mindful what you're targeting and what you're giving your opponent here. This could backfire if you're not careful. Initially, you're thinking, well, with nothing else, this, that sounds terrible. Just hold on. Now, we have the Contaminator. The Contaminator is a 5 for 5, again a bronze, this time a human agent. Love the art here. Would not want to meet this man in a dark alley. I'm not going to lie. And it is again, obviously, clog support with the deploy ability. Banish an enemy unit with three or less power. Straight up banish. No graveyard for you. You could pair this with the card you were doing damage to, for instance, to get rid of it. Also, this really could be a problem. It'll destroy a Maddock, but it just spawns a base copy at the bottom of your opponent's deck. So that's not really going to help. In the YouTube reveal video that CDPR did, I saw people saying this destroyed Maddox decks. I don't think they'd read the second half. But again, this is another way to put more cards into your opponent's deck. Still to the bottom of the deck, though. So your opponent's not going to find these cards necessarily unless they have tutors to grab them specifically. Again, it can target gold cards. Again, it won't clog tokens. So you're thinking, well, it's not really clogging. I've heard a lot of people very unhappy with Golden Necker Skelliger in the last couple of months. It's been so strong. The ability to use, obviously, Golden Necker thin down consistently to zero or one cards and play Magic Compass has been amazing. Well, this whole archetype just absolutely destroys that idea. You're going to really, really struggle to thin your deck well enough. And this is a meta-based restriction to that deck 
being good, as long as this is good, that list can't exist effectively consistently, which is very interesting while still being a little bit healthier than the old clog list. Those are the two bronze cards. The art on this next one. Oh my word. I am a huge, huge fan. I, I, am I about to say I'm a huge fan of abduction? Please don't demonetize this video. I am a fan of the card abduction. What on earth is that creature? I am terrified of it. It looks like a... You know what? I don't even want to know. I just don't want to fight it. Abduction is a brand new Echo Tactic. Obviously synergy across various different things there for Nilfgaard, but let's just dive into the card. Play a unit that isn't from your opponent's starting deck. So all of a sudden, those gold cards you were considering, whether to put in or not, now you're thinking, ooh, ooh, I can, I can have that. And it's got to be a provision cost of 10 or lower, so you can't all of a sudden go and steal their Fakusha or... Etc. There is a limit on this, and it is an Echo card. It's worth remembering that. But it will boost itself by one for each provision below the limit. So putting in a Bronze Engine card, for example, and pulling it out will boost and protect it the moment you do it. Yes, that does thin your opponent's deck, so there's a little bit of counter-synergy here if you're trying to run this in something like Colgrim, for example, which many of you will be going to with Clog as a first thought of, ah ha ha, I can play Colgrim again. Oh, he's gonna be everywhere. But this is actually counter synergy for that, and I don't think modern clog is going to be as one dimensional as that. Yes, of course, there will be a Colgrim clog list, because if you've got new clog cards, you're going to go for big clog payoff. But I think there will be another version of this that perhaps won't rely on that quite so heavily. We'll soon find out. But this is a fascinating card, good value in a less force your opponent down to. Uh, a super full deck. It's going to be interesting to see how this one's going to work. I like this card on balance. I think it's pretty decent. The final one, the legendary, named Sandor de Bacala. I've probably butchered this poor man's name, but you know what? He's Nilfgaardian. He definitely deserves it. Five base power, ten provisions. Crucial, of course, can't go into Golden Necker Clog if that's where your brain is going. Human, again, an agent. A lot of agent synergy across this. Be interesting to see the reworks that go around all of these cards. I'll try and cover them tomorrow in the next This one is multifaceted. It's an engine, it's got a deployability, it's got an order ability. This one is all singing, all dancing. Deploy, very simple. Shuffle a card from your deck into your opponent's deck. Okay, so thin ourselves, clog them, and it's just shuffle, not to the bottom. Very important, not to the bottom. Then, order ability, not zealed, just order. Spawn a drone at the bottom of your opponent's deck and set its power to the difference between the number of cards. So if I've got zero cards and they've got 20 cards, I'm spawning a 20-point token at the bottom of their deck. That's kind of scary, unless, of course, I am going to use abduction to take that back out. Bear in mind, a drone is a zero provision card, so it will also be boosted very heavily by abduction when being pulled here. That's pretty cool. That's a lot of points. You've just got to make sure you find a way to grab that card out of your opponent's deck or that they don't have access to it. The drone does go right to the bottom, so unless they're running a tutor that can grab it, Royal Decree, a Neuromancy, something to that effect, then you haven't got to worry, but a lot of lists run those cards. It is also an engine. Whenever a card enters or leaves your opponent's deck, this will also boost itself by one. So, this card will be on board, its deployability will take place, it should boost itself, the order ability will boost it as well. I think this is going to be quite a controversial addition to the game. I've never been a fan of Mill or Clog in Gwent specifically because of the way the mechanics work. I'm probably still going to hate playing against this, but I feel that the, the idea of it is to be less irritating high roll win by stopping your opponent finding things and more strategy of making them have a bigger deck and utilizing the engine value of putting things in there and getting in the way, if that makes sense. Yes, of course, that does play into and support some of the old clog archetype because, well, that just makes sense. But it's not all quite as high roll, quite as obtuse as perhaps... The original version of Clog was, which is why I personally don't hate it. Yes, I do still hate Rat Clog. 
Yes, I'm going to play this and give it a try and see how it fits. We now have all six factions. We still live in a vacuum. We have these cards. We make these judgments, even with the balance patch. Can't begin to comprehend how they're going to fit on ladder until we play hundreds, if not thousands of games between us with them to see what's wrong, what's not, and which factions we can work out the quickest. I'm curious because it never ends up being the faction worked out the quickest that ends up the best, except for Master Mirror Skellige, because that was just... You have all of them. Which faction are you starting with and what deck are you going to play? I'd love to find out. Let me know in the comments down below. I will share my deck lists with you on patch day, as well as a whistle-stop tour of the biggest points for the balance patch. I hope you're as excited as I am. Hype season has been amazing, and I wanted to give a special shout-out one more time to three particular reveals, Gabane, Art, and Moshcraft. Their reveal videos were hilarious. I'll tag all three of them down in the comments below. Go on. Go and watch them. No, no video will ever be on the level of Agent Bomblin. And if you don't know, Google it. Best reveal of all time. But it's great to see the passion and the humor brought into these reveals. I think it's great. And I can't wait to see the next lot. This has been my reveal schedule videos. I hope you've enjoyed them. Hopefully, if you have liked the videos, you've already subscribed to the channel. Apparently, three quarters of you watching this video don't subscribe to my channel, which is a terrible life choice fix that. Thank you for being here, guys, and I will catch you in the next video.